everybody, Raul here for Bass Musician Magazine, and today we have the extraordinary honor and pleasure of catching up with our old good friend from so many years, Rob Harper. Yay! Yeah! Many of you remember Rob from our previous interviews. We go back, I mean, we interviewed, we talked in 2017, did an update 2019. We've been touching base at the NAM shows every chance we get. Rob released a record, the Funk record. He is one of the upstanding preservers of Funk. As we know it, he has received accolades from Bootsy Collins himself, shouting out on Rob's Funk. And we're here to get caught up, find out what Rob's been up to after all this time. Rob, what have you been up to? Hey, Raul. Nice introduction. Glad <laughs> to see you, man. It's been a while. It has. Yeah, man, uh, I just wanted to catch up because I think last time we talked, like you said, was what, 18 or 19, right? Yeah. And uh, well, let's start right here. When uh, 2020, when the COVID started shutting everything down at the beginning of that year, uh, you know, by me, one thing about being blessed with all these sponsors is that you have to be able to adopt and uh, uh, keep them happy. Mm -hmm. You got to do something. Yeah. So my band, you know, when I was with that rap band, Area 301 at the time, you know, they shut completely down. All the session work shut down. And I'm like, oh, boy. And I really kind of like, oh, my sponsor something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's keep it real. I was trying to get photo shots and couldn't arrange that stuff. Everybody was scared. And I said, you know what? I'm going to start writing some music, man. This is a, the opportune time to do that. It's been a while. So the first time I did something... The album was called Ride With Me. It was a hip-hop instrumental, if you would call it. And I just wanted to give somebody some beats, because, like, remember at the time where when they had everything closed, you could only go to the store and the gas stations, mm -hmm. stuff like that. So when I would make those little trips, I was like, man, they need some music to ride with while mm -hmm. they're going out to the little, you know, make them feel better, lift their head while they're going to the gas station or going to get their groceries or whatever and coming right back home. Yeah. It's kind of really boring at that time. You know, everybody was getting really kind of trying to adapt to that. So that's where that concept came along. But it also helped me because musically, I haven't recorded nothing since I did the New Jazz Funk record back in 2012. So I had to blow off the cobwebs, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. <laughs> With the composing and everything. Uh, that's not something, that's a whole other ball game besides just playing bass. You have to really like mentally, spiritually, uh, just get into this groove. It's like setting up like Kobe and them used to do before they had the big games. They sit by on a bench with their headphones on or in a locker room and they really focus in on what they get ready to do. Mm -hmm. Any great athlete, you know, that's my perspective. The first record was pretty easy because I know beats. We just did drum beats, little bass, little synthesizer layered on top. No vocals or nothing. And it was just, oh, it's called Ride With Me. And then in parentheses, street beats. Okay. So we did that. And we, we, you put that out for us. You helped put that mm -hmm. out, remember? Mm -hmm. And uh, we had a radio station that came out of, I forgot the guy. The guy's name is Marvin Mink. He's out of Connecticut. He heard it somewhere, and he told me to send it to him. And we, me and my engineer were laughing because it was really just like a project. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We weren't expecting no airplane from it. You know, that was crazy. And he started pumping it, you know what I mean? Nice. I mean, this is not an internet radio station, a real legit radio station, you know? Mm. I'm sorry I can't think of the, the letterings right now. Mm. <laughs> sorry, Marvin, but yeah. Marvin Meek Radio, if you just Google that, you'll find him out of Connecticut. Anyway, and he pumped it, and I got good response for that. And so that, that just <laughs> egged me on to do some more. And I said, well, you know, people know me as a funk artist, but I don't really have a real bona fide funk record out. The new jazz funk record I did back in 2012 was new jazz funk. I was I was, I was experimenting with a couple of genres, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It wasn't just a slamming hardcore 70 type funk that I was I grew up on and I still love today. So I uh, I was I, I started contemplating that and getting concepts in my mind. Didn't have a title yet until uh, during that COVID time, you know, we locked down. I'm watching a lot of YouTube videos more than normal. Hmm. And I see uh, Wayman Tisdale. I come across his documentary, and I never saw it before. I do his music, 
You know, I had a couple of his CDs, but I never really knew anything about him. I knew he played basketball for a while, but never really got into the the mind and who he was. And that documentary, man, it was so, it almost had me cheery-eyed at the end. Mm. It touched me that much. I said, wow, this was a good dude. Gone too soon, you know? So, yeah, so he succumbed to cancer, what, 2010, I think it was? Yeah, so it was a sad story, but, you know, it was life, and uh, his wife stood strong and his kids and everything. But it put it planted that seed in my mind. I said, man, you know what? I want to continue that. He had a record called the Funk Record, F O N K. Mm-hmm. I wanted to do the same thing and just as a tribute to him. And then, you know, as many people that I've been inspired by, I couldn't just attribute to just one person. So, as back in the liner notes, it says to him first of all, first and foremost, and then uh. I think I just said all the funk players that inspired me, you know, Uzi, Larry Graham, Louis John, all of them. So I started writing. I had my concept, which was really easy, funk. That's my forte. Mm-hmm. And I just started writing. We wrote eight songs or something. I didn't want to do the, the 13, 14 songs. I think the way the industry is changing now, that's really a waste of money, you know. You see a lot of people, even major people, they just doing singles now. Yeah. And if they do an album, it's really like an EP or something. You're know, doing five or six songs. You know, 14 songs, and, the, and, the, and and Spotify might kick two of them off of there for you. It's just, I'm going back to the old school ways when they had three on one side and four on the other. <laughs> so no more than seven songs. We I think we had seven, and then a, one, one song that was a bonus. And now uh, that record blew up. Now, my thing is really like, is it unorthodox? I'm just going to call it strange, because I, I look on the internet, and, and, I, and I, don't, I don't get a lot of sales on Spotify and all that stuff. But guess where I get my money from that all the musicians wish they got their money from? Mm. I sell a lot of CDs. And, and so, you know, if, you, if you, people are wondering how I can sit back here at home like this, and well, I'm retired too from my day job, but I still, um, uh, I, I, I've been blessed, man, you know, to sell a numerous amount of CDs. Just, it takes care of the bills, you know what I mean? So uh, I'm happy with that and it keeps me going. It was so much, he played that record, and then, oh, then I got 15, I think I got 16 radio stations already, all together. All over the world, Germany, Belize, Italy, and uh, UK, those are my hot spots. I forgot the name, forgive me, uh, they're pumping my stuff. You know, I'm not all, all over the place, but to sell as many CDs as I do when I put them out, and to have uh, 16 stations that are waiting for me to put out, I just send the music to them, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Go straight up, you know what I mean? Uh, I, I, I'm blessed, you know what I mean? In today's crazy music world, you know what I mean? I, I had to follow that up with uh, two more singles. I did The Bomb. That blew up. I was on one then, you know? I was mm-hmm. on, a, on a road. And then I did uh, Bounce With Me. Okay. You know? And I, what I did was, since I had this time, I was able to get the, some of the best session musicians out here in Maryland. And a couple people from Parliament Funkadelic, too. Uh, shout outs to Greg Boyer. Their longtime standing uh, trombone player, and uh, Jared Scheider, who's their uh, rhythm guitarist and lead, does lead vocals. His father was actually Gary Scheider, the diaper man. Wow. Yeah, the guy that wore the diaper. So he he took a, he stepped into his father's footsteps. He's with George now. You know, it was downtime then, so I got caught them at the right time, and they uh, they did the first two videos with me, uh, the bomb video and the uh, bounce with me. No, not bounce with me. Uh, all about that funk from that funk record. Yeah, and I hooked up with a guy uh, who uh, who's uh, working with me with the videos and stuff, and uh, all that's out here, man. Uh, all this a blessing. Uh, I was staying busy, just doing videos, mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. you know, and, and spending my money on the videos. I didn't have nobody uh, outsources helping me with none of that stuff. Uh, I, I came out of me, my pocket, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And my wife's. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she helped out a little bit. So I, I've been doing that, man. So. I've been spending a lot of time composing. Okay. I like composing more so now because um, it's also something that it never disappears. It, just like a well, well, just like a record. Mm-hmm. Well, well, that's that's all tied together. Just like a video and a record. Once you put them out there, they're out there. Mm-hmm. They stay out there. You yeah. know what I mean? Forever, for infinity. You know. And I'm really digging that. So it's something I can leave behind when I'm long gone for the kids and everybody else. But it's something I want to get a little deeper into because people have been seeing it overseas. You know the guy named Raymond W? Yes. He's a great R&B singer. He reminds me of Michael Jackson 
a lot. Uh, and I listened to him. He saw my stuff, my, my, my music, and heard my music, and saw my videos. And uh, he's in Belgium. Yeah. A lot, I got a, bit, a lot of fan base out there. Uh, I, I wrote two songs for him. Nice. Straight to the Top and Strike. So if you guys hear that, Raymond W., Straight from the Top and Strike. I wrote those. Nice. And uh, he's going to have me do some more stuff for him. And I got some other people lined up now, but I'm not going to start until 2024. I'm kind of taking a break and just writing right now my own stuff. And I've been working out in the gym, doctor's orders, losing some weight. You know, okay. got about 20 more pounds to go here. And I'll be set. I'm trying to get ready for the NAMM show. Get NAMM show ready. That'd be my debut. So it's good to always take a little time off. So I'm concentrating on me for these next, uh, well, October, November, December, these last three months of the year. And uh, oh, but I'm not leaving out a. Uh, George Clinton's uh, niece I'm going to be working with, Shirley Clinton. She's coming out. By the time this video comes out, she's probably going to be already recorded. But she's coming out to uh, record a single with me. And I'm excited about that. We've done some performing together last year uh, with another artist by the name of Tony Cam. He, he's a funk artist out of uh, Virginia. Lynchburg, Virginia. He's got some ties with a lot of P-Funk people on a... Uh, we, we jumped, I jumped on the train and went out there and did some stuff with him. Maybe we'll you see some more with Tony Cam too in the future. We'll see what happens. So in addition to all of this stuff, one of the things that we had talked about back in 19 was you got yourself set up kind of with a rehearsal studio, but since then you've moved. So the, the new improved studio is Funky Foot Studio. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy name I came up with. I don't know. I just, you know, like when they come down here, they have to uh, remove their shoes. Okay. And put on their little boot footies. I'm, I'm ordering I'm ordering a machine where you actually, I've seen it on uh, Amazon. We actually take your whole shoe. You don't have to take your shoe off or nothing. You just step your, your foot in a box and it automatically wraps your foot. Oh, nice. So I'm going to have that in a few weeks for them so they don't want to take off their shoes. But... So I was thinking about the foot thing there, and then of course the, the funky thing, and I just combined it together, funky foot, rehearsal studios. And what this is, is it, this is another one where I moved from other place, like I said, we have a new residence now, but I always wanted to keep it open for the uh, independent artist in, in the surrounding community, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because I think they have such an unfair shake with uh, these studios and stuff, with these outlandish prices, man. You know, I won't mention no names, but you know, some of them charging prices like these guys are not major. They're yeah, not, they're not playing behind major artists. They trying to make a living, and they got their own little stuff out. You know what I mean? And I can't, I can't take care of the whole community, but um, I, I have a selected few that I allow to come actually into my residence, into this studio right here. Mm -hmm. See all the pictures you putting up. And uh, record for half of what they would pay uh, a commercial studio. Okay. And everything I have in here is brand spanking new. I take care of my stuff. I just don't. I don't abuse nothing. Everything looks new, and everything pretty much is new. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the stuff that's old looks new. It just I just take care of everything. And I have uh, everything. Keyboards is fully equipped. Have bottled water here for you guys with a little refrigerator. I'm looking at over there. We have a restroom down here. This is in the basement of my house. We have PA system, floor monitors, drum sets, percussion, kungas, microphones. You can see a few behind me. I got an assortment of amps behind me. Uh, wow, for the bass player, mm -hmm. you can use any, any one except for my white one. That's my GR bass amp. That's my personal. There you go. But I got a, uh, I got a bunch of amps. I got guitar stuff, uh, guitar amps, brand new. I talked to different guitar players and asked them what was well used and well liked out there. I didn't just take my own assumptions and thinking, you know what I mean? And then I got this big old expensive keyboard by Yamaha. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still paying on that. Boy. There you go. You know, you I just wanted to have everything here, and uh, um, and so they feel comfortable. And uh, I got it set up. It's all, it's all got the good looking and feel of a studio. It's acoustically uh, done up with the acoustic tiles all over the place, so the sound don't be bouncing all over the place. And while we talking about this, so I don't forget, I want to thank my number one sponsor for, for help furnishing this place. It's DNA Guitar Gear. 
Those guys just came through and showed up, man. And uh, mm -hmm. music stands. They get for the the holy uh the tablets or your computers. They got some music stands, special music stands that can hold that stuff. And they got they built with five legs at the bottom. And that's a trademark. They even have the guitar stands. I'm looking at my bass stand. It's like that too. It's called the Starfish. It has the five legs at the bottom. They sent me all that stuff, man, because because I told them what I was doing. They just did it for the cause. Nice. I really, DNA. I really appreciate that. And you guys check it out. You know, it's uh, if anybody that follows me know I'm kind of like a, a gearhead. <laughs> I'm always peeking and looking at stuff. You know what I mean? And I'm trying to find the latest and greatest. So. Uh, Another shout out to DNA uh, Guitar Gear for uh, help furnishing this studio, man. Appreciate it. Nice. Well, and a lot of it is also kind of come back to how you get your own sound. As you mentioned, your GR bass amp, you know, it's, it's kind of signature white. So that really stands out on stage. And again, I see it in the video, the bomb particularly, uh, that popped to me. Oh, yeah. And of course, your Paul Lerat basses. You said it right. There we go. The rat, yep. Because because he's got such a characteristic body shape and all that. I mean, you can't mistake those. Where we see it. Yeah. Yes. In there. You know, uh, see, by me being a geek head, and I go to the NAMM show practically every year for the last 22 years, I study stuff. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Especially when they had those uh, bass musician magazines and love to crack the pages and uh, look at different subjects about woods and tone woods and mm -hmm. pickups and all that. So uh, yeah, it's good to, for, for you to know what's, what's going on out there when it comes to electronics, types of wood, not just name brands. You know what I mean? There's yeah. a lot of brands out there and a lot of things look nice. But as I said, I think I said in an interview before, besides the distinctive look of that bass by Paula Rat is uh, the, the electronics grabbed me. Yes. Because I heard a lot about uh, Germany's Delano pickups, and they also have a Glock and Clang preamps. Hmm. Smoking, man. I, I, I found that out at the NAMM show like about 10 years ago. I heard them on some bass I was playing, and I was like, what do you have in here? And when they told me, I was like, okay, this is me. Because I like a lot of, I like, I like real quick response, real punchy stuff, mm -hmm. real snappy. You know what I mean? I, they call them transients. I like that sound. Of, brrr, I like it to come out like a typewriter. Okay. Come right back. I like it to be fat still, but everybody has their different ways they like stuff. I like mine to be fat and punchy. Get me? That's why I like my amp too. That uh, I didn't just get it because it's white. <laughs> mm -hmm. Everything he uses in there is not from China, not from nowhere else. It's from Italy. Mm -hmm. He even has the, the ginseng speaker company in Italy, build his speakers. Oh, nice. Hey, they're in Italy, yeah. And and I, and I think it's a big difference when you're not just everybody else uses the same companies for the same things, and, and he's not doing that. He's putting a little extra into his stuff. He's not trying to cut the corners. And to make a long story short, I've been studying what he's been doing with those amps. Is uh, his his amps are not like all these other different brands. A lot of people don't know. They tweak they tweak the heads. The, the electronic engineers to get a certain sound out. He doesn't do that. He leaves everything wide open. And if you want to tweak something, he has a button that you can push and then go do that. Stuff. Okay. But his is called, uh, that's why he called his pure sound. That's a logo uh, model, they say. How do they slogan? Yeah. A uh, pure sound. And with that pure sound, with, 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 and those speakers that's being built custom for him, is I've never. Being a funk bass player, we like to go deep. You know, we like deep bass. Clear, man. And I couldn't find nothing. All these brands I got, no names mentioned. Got a lot of them standing behind me right now. But uh, they could not, they could not hold the booty right. They could not cut it for me. Gotcha. Once I got past, once I dialed past seven, I started feeling a, a distortion. And this dude, man, I can turn up. Well, really, his, they're so powerful and clear. When I'm out stage playing it, like recently I just played at a, a park outside, I think I had it on four. And it was just shaking all through the... It's like it's my monitor on stage, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, 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 it's waving my pants, and 
that's what I like. You know what I mean? Yeah, you go. My percussionist was real close to me. He was asking, could you turn it down just a little bit, Rob? Mm. You know what I mean? That's how, and it's an 800 watt amp. Wow. With two with two 12 inch speakers and a tweeter, blowing all that. So, uh, like you said, you 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 know about the bass thing. My that's my sound, and uh, I had a lot of guys out there from the industry that were checking me out that day at that park. It was a couple months ago, and afterwards, they were telling me, oh, I kept saying they love my tone. Mm. When somebody says they love your tone, that's a compliment. Indeed. Coming, especially when it's coming from. A, a, a players, you know what I mean? A, just, the, just the top of the line session players. Yeah. You know, they 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 were like, man, your tone. That means a lot when it comes to bass. Because I, I see a lot of great bass players out there, but when I'm seeing them on stage, I don't really like what I'm hearing coming out of this stuff. Yeah. A lot of them play through the, um, what do they call it, the back line? Mm-hmm. They don't want to bring their own amps. Yeah. I'm different. I'm one guy who will actually roll into a gig with my amp in the back of my truck. Yeah, yeah. And everybody's like, "What are you doing?" I'm like, "Dude, I just, I just can't take no gamble." Uh, you know, I had so many sound men and uh, 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 jack my sound up, or they, the the equipment was wore out, or a speaker was blown, mm. and, and, and it falls on me. You know yeah. what I mean? So if it's not too far from here, from where I'm living, I bring my own amp. Gotcha. Or if I can find one in, 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 in a different state, if I can find one in, over there, I really prefer my own amps. So. Um, we we'll work on that next year because I'm gonna be doing a lot of playing next year live. So we got to see how we're gonna figure that out when I start bouncing around in different states. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, and staying on the Italy theme because Gr is from Italy. You're also playing on Gali strings, and yes. Rigotti cables. Yes. And let me see if I say it right. Magrabo, Magar, Magrabo. Guitar straps. Guitar straps. Mm-hmm. That's my Italian connection. There you go. <laughs> it has been very, very good to me. Nice. Yeah. Uh, nice. So I have the GR bass amps from there. Mm-hmm. I have the Galai strings, who been around since I think eighteen ninety something. So common sense, they have to know something, something that they're doing to be around this long. You know yeah. what I mean? And they actually part partnered with me uh, because they're friends with GR bass. So we kind of met like that at the NAMM. So they were they had booths right next door to each other. I don't know if you remember when you were there. Mm-hmm. They were right next door to each other. And I was with another string company. And um, I was telling them, I'm good. I really don't I don't need another endorsement. But they persisted. And p- p- with persistence, they won me over. Mm-hmm. And uh, with negotiations. And uh, negotiations, yes. But it was also the quality. I noticed that their strings, they were real flexible. And it gave me that punch and that clarity that I, I've been looking for. I've tried a lot of different streams. Oops, I was about to say some names. Mm-hmm. But I, I tried a lot of different co- companies out there. And just because everybody else thinks they're popular, you got to get what's right, what feels right for you. What's what, what you hear, yeah. what you feel, you know what I mean? So these strings allow me to play for a long time without getting cramps in my hands and stuff. And just, uh, what they call that? I haven't used that word in so long. Where your hands just get tired. Yeah, fatigued. Fatigued, yeah. Yeah. I don't get that with playing with these strings. And the sound is just amazing, and they last long. I mean, I I, I, don't, I, don't, I do a string change every five, six months. Wow. That's a, long, that's a half a year, dude. You know, but they take care of me. They got strings for everything, mandolins, banjos. I got strings. I'm looking over here for my upright electric EUB bass, mm-hmm. uh, even a regular acoustic basses, acoustic guitars. They have it all. And I, I would advise you guys, check it out. Just, yeah. you know, don't listen to me. Uh a company's been around since 1890, some whatever that is. I would check them out if I was you. There but you uh, go. yeah, and I got a uh, Magrabo, mm-hmm. a Magrabo straps, Italian leather straps. They're real, really been really good to me. Uh, and they also made me a a, a little case to hold my wireless transmitter. Oh, yeah, real nice. You you can either put it on your belt or put it on the strap. So they've been looking out for me. You can see me on their site. They got me all. Class it up on their website. And, uh, That's for GR, Rigotti, Gali, and Magrabo. Oh, Rigotti Cables. Rigotti. Yeah, that's my buddy. Oh, you guys got to check him out. He's fire. Now, you guys know, if you've been following me, I've been with a few cable companies. Now, this one, the, the main thing I can say about this one is pretty much like GR and Gali. The Italy companies make all their stuff right there. Mm. They don't outsource. You know what I mean? 
No sweatshops, none of that mess. You know what I mean? They 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 straight full on employees and they top quality stuff. And his cables are made. They real expensive, but. He gives them to you at a real decent price. You know what I mean? Nice. And he can make different custom c- colors for you and all that stuff. That's Rigate Cables, yeah. Oh, and then kind of wrapping up there, you have Flatly Pedals and... Telefunken. Yeah. Yeah. Because I want to give everybody a shout out because uh, a lot of people don't do this during interviews. But these people are behind me and they don't have to be behind me. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I'm giving them exposure but I'm not on a world tour right now, nothing. You know what I mean? I'm a local yokel right now in the United States, gigging around, gigging around Maryland, man. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. We got some things set up for next year. We, it looks pretty bright for going over to Belgium and uh, UK. Nice. But they've been with me for a few years, most of them. And so I have to give them a mention. Uh, Gladly, fellas, get him real quick. That's a nice guy. His name is Paul. We met actually on um, LinkedIn. Mm. You see? Uh, you, could, you could be somebody anywhere. He used to like my stuff all the time, and I used to like his stuff all the time. Uh, so when me and him, we used to do this, I would recognize him because there wasn't many likes on the picture in the first place. You get me? Mm-hmm. I said, let me check this guy out. And I said, oh, wow, he makes his own pedals and stuff. And he, he he's another one. He makes it all in the UK, all his parts and stuff. He's real serious about it. His thing is with his, uh, number one is electronics, but it's uh, custom paint jobs. Oh, wow. Yeah, he does some stuff. There's a process. Most companies not gonna spend that kind of time painting a pedal. They're gonna run it through the conveyor belt yeah. and spit it out. You know what I mean? He's like a it's like a piece of art. He's in his pedals are in the shop like two or three days getting custom painted. So you go on his site and check that out, anybody. Uh Flatly Pedals in the UK. He has a bunch of stuff on you on uh, YouTube where you can see okay. how he uh does that. Telly Funkin was a sponsor that I acquired at the last NAMM show before they shut down. Wow. Uh, in 2020, before COVID, right before COVID, a few months before they shut everything down. And what I liked, what I like about them is, uh, you know, they deal with me and they're with uh, Alicia Keys, Snoop Dogg, mm-hmm. John Legend, and then little old me walked up and, and they gave me a lot of respect, you know what I mean? Nice. And what they liked about me, you know, I could talk. <laughs> they said, you do a lot of talking, but we're listening to you. You know what you're talking about. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and so they were really talking, listening to me when I stopped at their booth to talk, you know. They and, gave me some pretty microphones. I think they're called M80s. They're gold-plated and, and uh, beautiful, beautiful microphones. As a matter of fact, you can see them on my videos, the, uh, the videos I did, the bomb. Yeah. All about that funk and bounce with me. I, those videos, uh, those are... Uh, Microphones are for use out there. On the nice. Video. You see them. But they make the top of the notch stuff. If they're dealing with those type of major artists. So thanks again, Telefunkin. There you go. And the last one I've got on my list is Fishman Transducers. Oh, yes. They've been around for a while. And I had them for a few years now. Oh, about 2016, I think, or something like that. And uh, Fishman does more than just pickups. They do two great tuners. I use their tuners. I'm so spoiled with tuners. Let me just say this. I've been using these electronic tuners so long, Raul, I don't even know how to tune my bass without one. <laughs> That's terrible. Yeah, it is. But, you know, I mean, I can go on the piano and hit the C or whatever. Yeah. I'm saying that back in the days before all this stuff came out, now I'm telling my age, before the electronic tuners came out, we used to be able to just do that by ear, you know? Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm so rusty now with that. I, I just realized that about a month ago. I was somewhere, and I was like... Where's my tuner at? I can't even tune without my tuner. Yeah. But anyway, Fishman makes them real accurate tuners. They're real accurate. They snap the clip-ons. And they also make the, the pedal uh, versions, too. Chromatic. Nice. You can chromatically tune anything. But uh, I, got a, I got a thing called a Fizzin pedal. F-I-S-S-I-O-N. Okay. And it has like a fuzz and a, a bunch of different effects in it. And uh, they've been taking care of me. And they recently just sent me some pickups, their hottest pickups called the in- Influence Influence pickups. Hmm. Yes. Uh, and those are those are really selling hot. So I'm about to get those in one of my bases pretty soon. Yeah. Nice, nice uh, outfit. And I'm just proud of all my sponsors. I hope I got everybody. One, one thing what they like about me is I might not have the biggest numbers, but... 
I put the picture. I put the work. I put I put the work in. There you, you know? go. And they all tell me that. They say we see more stuff on your site than we see on people's sites that do a little more than you. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Really like that. <laughs> so anyway, Rob, you're doing so much stuff. You got so much stuff going on. Where's the best place for people to go if they want to know what you're up to? Let's just go to my home site. It's been there for about what? More than a decade now. What's that? www.robertharperbase.com. That's my home. What I did was I had my website people connect everything to that site now. Okay. So now you can go there. I think it's 10 pages. But out of those 10 pages, if you scroll down to the bottom, you'll see links that go to Facebook, that even go to my Google. Nice. Everything is there. So just www.robertharperbase.com. You can check me out there. I will be at the NAMM show in 2024, January. Uh, so you can probably catch me over at the GR booth and Paula Rett's booth. Oh, mm-hmm. we forgot. I got a new bass coming. Oh, nice. Yes. I'm calling it, I'm naming it myself. It's called the Black Star. Very cool. So at the NAMM show, stop by. And I, I, I'm a little different from a lot of guys. Ask Paul Loretta to let you play it a little bit. But be careful. Okay? Yeah. Don't tear up my bass now. There we go. Uh, I told him to let a lot of people to play it a little bit and just keep an eye on them. You know what I mean? So they don't they don't, they don't don't damage it or nothing. But uh, uh, I'm looking forward to playing that. So I'm going to play a couple of my old school tunes. You know, I'm going to do some stuff out there. Uh, this is going to be the last time I play for a while. You know what I mean? Because I'm not really like a – I'm not a Victor Wooten or – Marcus Miller solo type dude, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? I, I, I'm not, I'm not a play by myself type dude. I'm a, I'm a meat and potatoes and gravy guy. I, I like to play, just play some fat bass with a band, had the drums kicking behind me. So the Nam show is really not my place, really to play, because with a funk player, that's why you don't see a lot of funk players doing a lot there. They might do a little slap real quick and cut it out, because. Those guys that come around there and doing that sound check stuff, they sound monitors. Oh, yeah. When you play funk, if you really notice, funk is at a higher volume than, than most other music, and it's at a thicker, it's at a lower volume. I mean, a low, the tone is lower. Mm. We got to have more, we got to have more of that booty pumping out those speakers, and you can't do that when you turn the amp to two. Yeah. But you can get away playing some jazz and all that little light stuff, you know what I mean? So I don't really have fun playing. I'll be smiling when I'm playing, but it's really not, you know, it's really not fun. So I, I, I'm, 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 I got a new bass coming, so I'll, I'll play a couple of tunes, bring my little, my little uh, tablet. But uh, you guys better get this on film because I, I, I don't think I'm going to play there after this for a while, you know what I mean? Gotcha. I come and uh, socialize and enjoy the festivities, and, you know what I mean? Just relax a little bit, you know? Nice. Take it more as like a, a vacation. There you go. Well, Rob, it's been great catching up with you. It's great to hear you've got so much great stuff going on. Folks, make sure if you're in the Maryland area, check out Funky Foot. It's a little tongue twister. Funky Foot Studios. Yes. Excellent. Well, you've seen him here. Rob Harper on Bass Musician Magazine. See ya.